this episode of The Trend Talk, actor Chris Santos gives us the scoop on his latest movie. Lena Topete tells us how her mother's fight against cancer led her to create her dream project. And we talk luxury real estate with our expert, Cesar Melendrez. All that and more on The Trend Talk. Welcome to another fabulous episode of The Trend Talk. We're here again, obviously, with my fabulous co-host, Val Hernandez. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> well, you know, Naive, what, uh, what's on my mind now uh -huh. is all these movements that have started, all for the positive. Right. Um, it's like the Me Too movement, the Time's Up movement, and the March for Our Lives movement that the students started after all these tragedies have happened, and they're really serious. Right. Um, after um, they were on television, these are young high school kids who were so well-spoken, so smart, and right. I was really impressed with everything that they're getting done. Right. I was very impressed by Emma Gonzalez, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like the millennial generation is redeeming itself, yeah. right? Because we had this this idea or the stereotype that they were entitled, that they, you know, that they were kind of living off of their parents. Um, and high school is probably Generation Z, and, right? And generation or Z. Generation Z. But I was a little fearful of, of the next generation because it felt like each generation kind of started to feel more and more entitled. But I feel so happy that that generation knows when there's an issue in, in society that they need to stand up. And like and, you said, they were very eloquent. And they're taking action. Right. You know? But uh, I guess a lot of people feel that they're taking action at such a young age. But some people don't take action. Right. The majority of the people don't. And so they just like go along and then they don't figure out what they want to do you know, with their lives and right. then they get worried. Right. When, well, that's true. Like, for example, you mentioned this younger generation. They found a purpose, right? There's this issue that's um, killing students like them. They found an issue they were passionate about and it seems like every generation has had one. The millennial generation didn't really have that passionate, you know, that uh, serious of an issue to feel passionate about. Um, now this gun control issue is is something that's, like you said, motivating all of these young people. Right. But I think sometimes people look for purpose, and sometimes you feel like you need to find a purpose, and sometimes you panic when you turn 30, for example, which is a huge birthday, and you don't find that thing that, you know, that you're living for, like that, even if it's the just passion, your career. The passion of right, your life. Your career yeah. or, or your you know, reason the relationship for being. Or, right, exactly. right. Exactly. But the good news is that we're living longer. We're living yes. up to our 80s, 90s, and some even centenarians are living, right. you know, past 100 year, years old, and they're not finding their thing, and they're not breaking into the industry of their choice until 40, sometimes even 50. Yeah. So. But, you know, a lot of people did that. Like, for instance, that guy, what's his name, the guy from um, McDonald's? Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc. Right. He didn't start McDonald's and really become this huge success until the age like 52. I know. And then speaking of McDonald's and food, Kentucky Fried Chicken, the, you know, Colonel Sanders, he didn't start the franchise until he was 60. And Vera Wang, one of my favorite designers, she was a ballerina. She worked for uh, magazines for a while. But she didn't really make it big until after 40. And, you know, here's the thing. Sometimes you don't even make it big when you're alive. Right. That's so, true. you know, people have to remember that. Like Frida Kahlo, she started, you know, painting and she was, uh, you know, known, but she didn't get known to the world until she, after she passed away. Right. So, you know, it's it's like your passion and your your uh, passion for life and your success comes at every different age. Exactly. It's never too late, too. That's right. another lesson. It's never too late. And we are not going to be late because we are going to go to our next interview, Chris Santos. He's a hottie. He was uh, starring in C Steven Soderbergh's film Perfect, and he was also the male lead for The Girlfriend Experience so many years ago, but it's a cult classic, and we're going to talk to him in depth after the break. Don't go away. Chris Santos is best known for his breakout performance in the feature film 
The Girlfriend Experience, directed by Steven Soderbergh, where he played the male lead alongside adult film star Sasha Gray. Now his life has come full circle because he's at it again with Steven Soderbergh in a very interesting film project. What happened? Perhaps we should stop. Please, stay with me. Hi, Chris. Nice to you? see you. Nice to see you both. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the Trend Talk. I appreciate it. So your career has had a little bit of everything. You've done modeling. You were, uh, you know, you've done personal training. But I want to start from the beginning. You were modeling for Calvin Klein, for Versace. So why, why did you get out of modeling? Well, I'm, I'm one of five kids. And my mom, uh, when I was 12 and, and other kids were all different ages, kind of like pu just pushed us in front of the cameras, which, which is a common I th thing, I think, in America. <laughs> uh, and I was always easy, easy in front of cameras. It came easy to me, and I was comfortable, and I think that when someone's 12 is just a big hurdle there. Can your kids stand there and smile and not cry and freak out? And I could do that. So that, that, that got me working right away. And we were always doing the modeling and the acting. And uh, the acting was going and the modeling was going. And to be honest, you know, by 16, I was dropped out of high school and I was shooting a Versace campaign in Italy. And, wow. and I, I really didn't even know who Gianni Versace was at that time and, and got to know him very, very... So did you meet him? Gianni oh, yeah, yeah. So him, that's Donatella. like a whole education. I mean, traveling around the world and learning about other countries and meeting all these wonderful, famous people. Well, funny enough, I had to actually drop out of high school because when I'd gotten to Europe, I called my mother and I said, I'm not coming home. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was you saw the world and yeah, you wanted to be out there. Yeah, and uh, when I came back the following year, they, they, I wanted to go back to high school and they're like, well, you're going to have to be left behind for a year. So I wrote a 10-page paper about how... I, you know, I should be able to skip a year because I got educated. I saw the world. Oh, I, I went to Italy, that was like Paris, your thesis, London. Right? Like yeah, the whole yeah, that was high my, school thesis. Traveling. That was my right. high school thesis on skipping a year of high school. And did it, it work? It worked. It oh, worked. Wow. Uh, I had to go on home teaching. The principal said, "I'll let you do 11th and 12th at the same time, and if you could handle that." You, you can graduate on time. And then fast forward, you became a personal <laughs> trainer. That's quite a, you know, a, a leap from like modeling and acting, traveling the world in Europe to becoming a personal trainer. Why did you enjoy that part of it so much, training? Well, I was always athletic when I was younger and in high school. And again, you know, when you do a job where it's all based on uh, a lot on rejection, and mm -hmm. plus, you know, modeling and acting was something my mother made me do. So I mm. think when I got about 18 or 19, I'd done a lot of pretty sizable jobs. I was happy with what I did. I felt like I, I'd lived up to what my mom wanted me to do, and I wanted to do something on my own. Right. So maybe it was like a youth in revolt <laughs> or whatever. But when I started, I started just personal training on the side as like just a side gig and something to keep me active. But right. I really connected with uh, helping people and changing their lives. And like I really had an impact as opposed to just taking a photograph or being acting or a commercial. Like I could, I could reach into someone's life and, and help them take command of and it. And that leap was an interesting leap because you started working with Soderbergh, like one of the biggest directors well, in the... Yeah, I mean, what happened was you met someone through your training that had a connection with Soderbergh. So it, it's like, it was kind of all meant to be and it all came full circle. So tell us about how training connected you with Soderbergh. Well, it's, it's a great question. Uh, so one of my first clients was a guy named David Levine. Mm -hmm who at that time was just a novelist, and he was trying to sell a screenplay that he wrote called Rounders. Mm -hmm. And he ended up selling that movie, and it went on to be a, become a cult classic, and then did a bunch of other films, and I would sort of train him, get him in shape, then he would go film a movie and get beat up, and then come back, and we had this relationship over 10 years. And he ended up where he was doing uh, Ocean's 13 with Soderbergh, and during that time, they came up with the idea for The Girlfriend Experience. And so I had actually quit training. I moved to Los Angeles because all of my brothers and sisters moved out here. And David called me one day and said, hey, I just wrote this film, and I swear to God, the character's a trainer, and he's you. And so I'd like you to meet Steven, and, and I'm not saying anything will come of it other than the two of you just meeting. 
Right. And so we did, and at the end of that, he said, "And the rest you're is be the history." Guy. Because yes. now you're in that movie that was that came out, I believe, in 2009, yes. the Girlfriend Experience, with Sasha Gray, who's still probably one of the most known adult film stars in the industry. And actually, that ser that movie became a series um, that is actually airing on Stars. You're not in it, but it was inspired, obviously, by the film. Yeah, which is cool. Right. But I also want to ask you a very interesting question. Um, talk to us about, you know, I'm not sure if you've heard the news about Leslie Kahn and about the audio tape that she was encouraging her students to take on a Latino persona to get more roles. It got a lot of, uh, she got a lot of, um, what is it called? Press. A, oh, yeah. Well, a lot of press. But <laughs> and a, a lot of a backlash. Backlash, mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you feel about someone changing their ethnicity or identity um, to get roles? That's a really, really interesting question. I studied with Leslie for a lot of years, um, and I can't speak more highly of Leslie. Uh, and I haven't heard the tapes, and I haven't read the things, so I don't want to speak out of turn, but I can, I can bet. Okay, look. So I am, my last, my name is Christopher Patrick Santos, um, Portuguese, Brazilian, and Irish. So I can oscillate without question between them if I wanted to be more Latino or more white. And have I read for straight Latino parts? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I probably feel like maybe Latinos are becoming more dominant in the workplace right now. So I, I probably would think... Uh, again, without speaking out of turn, Leslie was probably just saying, like, look, if you can pull off that sort of feeling, then pull it off. You know, you could have an Israeli person might look Latino, you know. I might not look Latino, and I am Latino. So it's like, I haven't heard them, but I'd be really interested to hear them and see if she probably just wanted people. I mean, at the end of the day, you're an actor. If, if, if you can play a disabled person, you can play a Latino, you know. Uh, that's what we're trained to do. Right. Well... You're a very interesting actor. Where can we find you? We Now that we've discovered and introduced you to some of our audiences, <laughs> a lot of them may know you, where can we find you on social media? Uh, yeah, so on Instagram, it's They Call Me Santos. On Twitter, it's I'm Chris Santos. I am, letter M, Chris Santos. And on Facebook, it's just Facebook forward slash Chris Santos dot three, I think. That's okay. awesome. Well, thank you so much. And obviously, we can also check you out in the Steven Soderbergh film, Perfect, which is yes. out now. Out now. Chris, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank and, you. Wonderful uh, to meet you. Yeah, wonderful to meet you. Good luck with everything. Come we'll back, right back with your next movie. Yeah. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. We'll be right back. Don't go away. After the break, there's still a lot more of The Trend Talk. We sit with actress turned entrepreneur, Lena Topete. So my mom was suffering an allergy to lipstick for about 18 years. And almost four years ago, we were talking one day and she goes, you know what? I'm done buying lipstick. I'm wasting a lot of money. They don't work for me. Um, I wish a celebrity would develop an allergy and maybe they, they'll create something that I could wear. Mm -hmm. And I'm always gonna, for the rest of my life, marvel at the fact that my answer was, mom, why does it have to be a celebrity? Why don't I try it? <laughs> Welcome back. I am always inspired by women who have a vision and take action on the vision. Such is the case with our next guest, Lena Topete. She is an actress, a singer, an entrepreneur, and right now she's got a passion for beauty. Welcome, Lena, to the Trend Talk. Hi, Welcome. thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and I'm really inspired by, you know, look at that beautiful line of lipsticks. But let's, let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about how growing up, your mom was a single mom. Yes. And she was in the Marines. Mm -hmm. So you traveled with her to Germany, to different countries. When she went out on her, what do you call them? Uh, we were stationed there. You were yeah. stationed mm -hmm. there. So tell us, how did that inform you of what you wanted to do? How did that open up your mind? I just think it gave me the, per, the perspective of um, being worldly, getting to see different cultures, meeting different people. Um, you have to acclimate to making friends quickly and just... Um, just all of that. So um, I think that that somehow gave me this adventurous spirit mm -hmm. and it's carried me through. And so you're kind of taking a little bit of a detour right now mm -hmm. because from your singing and your acting, mm -hmm. because you are going to be launching your lipstick line, which was inspired by your mom. Yes. So tell us, how did she inspire that? 
So my mom was suffering an allergy to lipstick for about 18 years. Mm -hmm. And almost four years ago, we were talking one day and she goes, you know what, I'm done buying lipstick. I'm wasting a lot of money. They don't work for me. Um, I wish a celebrity would develop an allergy and maybe they, they'll create something that I could wear. Mm -hmm. And I'm always gonna, for the rest of my life, marvel at the fact that my answer was, mom, why does it have to be a celebrity? Why don't I try it? And I, right. I don't know what encouraged that answer because I had no background in business or you know, business education or anything like that, but it changed my life. And well, also, see, that, uh, just uh, one more question following up on that, is that how do you decide to go into this when you don't know anything? What was your first step? Like, how, do you have to figure out the combinations or the ingredients? How do you do that? Google was like the, <laughs> was, was literally the first step. That's had, right. Like looking for manufacturing companies in Southern California and that because everybody asked me that. How did you start? That's really how I started. I remember you said we talked uh, previous to this and you said you had an image of your mom in your head of her yeah. with mm -hmm. the lipstick and the tissue paper. Can you tell us about yeah, that? Yeah. Um, I just had this this I had this memory basically it's like ingrained in my in my head mm -hmm. of I could see her in the mirror doing her red lipstick because that was her signature look doing the, the lip liner putting the red the red lipstick on blotting it with the toilet paper and then tossing it into the into the trash and so she was missing doing that because yeah, you couldn't wear was. the lipsticks she was yeah and that's interesting because the colors that you came up with are all the naming of the colors are all relatable to your mom right right so tell us about uh, the one that, uh, the hoorah. <laughs> that's how we say it, right? Because I think that's army. They say, who, I think it's like hoorah, but the Marine Corps is hoorah. 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 Okay, so, okay. Right. so, so that's so one of the names of the lipstick. It is. It's the red one. So what we did is, uh, when, once we finalized the colors, her and I sat down. And I'll remember the day for the rest of my life when we sat down and we're like, okay, what are we going to name these colors? And let's make it special. And so we looked at the colors and we felt like this color looks like this and this color looks like that. So you do have Ura, the red one. You've got I, um, the the pink one is I'm sorry, the purple one is the Bronx because Puerto Rican from the Bronx. Got fickle niche is the middle one. That's the nude. Um, that's her favorite beverage. And then Ribbon in the Sky. That one's kind of twofold. So Ribbon in the Sky um, is her favorite Stevie Wonder song. Uh -huh. But a little bit more deeper of a meaning is uh, her breast cancer fight that right. she's currently fighting almost 11 years now. So that's a special tribute. And then um, the last one is I Got You, Babe. My mom's a huge Cher fan. Uh -huh. So that's how that came about. How does she feel about this? Um, She's really proud. She's really, really proud, and she's been super supportive the whole way through, and she knows the journey, like, so close, just as, like, it is to me, too, so. So, how um, soon does your launch happen? Is it in imminent? So, it, it, already, it already did launch. Oh, it, it wonderful. Launched, it launched um, last summer, July 29th, National Lipstick Day. So, I thought it was, like, the perfect fit. That's oh, that, they're beautiful. I mean, I love the Café con Leche. And I love <laughs> the name, Impromptu. Talk yeah. to us about the name. So Impromptu came about, um, it wasn't the first name. That was like probably about the fourth name. And one day her and I were driving, because it was going to be named something else, and I was like, I don't, I don't feel it. So we were driving one day, and I go, Mom, what about Impromptu? And she says, why, why that? And I go, well, because this feels like a very impromptu decision to do this. And um, I want to encourage women to live life more in that way. And so that's how that was born. That's awesome. Well, tell us where... Anyone who wants to buy and look at more closely at your colors, where can they where can they find you? The website is impromptu.life, uh, Instagram is impromptu.life, and um, we'll be launching some new products uh, very soon. So I'm excited about that. Well, we hope that uh, everyone goes. I mean, I tried your lipsticks; they're awesome. We thank hope that you. everyone tries them. We want to thank you so much for coming. What a beautiful story! Inspira so inspirational. Thanks for having me. Seriously, and so beautiful as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Lena. And coming up next, Cesar Melendres. He's got the luxury home that you want to buy. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Our next guest is Cesar Melendres. He is the owner of the luxury real estate company Lowell and Vanderbilt. He's been selling luxury homes in one of the hottest markets in the country, Los Angeles, for over 15 years. Welcome, Cesar. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Bienvenido. it. Bienvenido. You look, look great. Dapper. Thank, Thank you. you. So thanks for being our real estate expert because that is a hot 
topic, especially here in Los Angeles. First of all, what is luxury real estate? Great question. So luxury, the term, to be honest, the last couple of years actually dwindled down. A lot of homes in Los Angeles cost very expensive, as you can tell. So the term luxury has kind of lost its luster. Mm -hmm. So to be really luxury, it's basically accessible to the top 1% of Americans today. Wow. And what about Lowell and Vanderbilt? Like, what do you guys specialize in? So our job is to give value to our clientele. I'll have you consider that your story told as realtors that we show homes and sell homes. Absolutely right. not. We are problem solvers. Right. And Caesar's being very modest because he can't say who, but he does have a couple of celebrity clients. But obviously that's, you know, kind of confidential information. But we know that you here in Los Angeles, especially there's a lot of high end areas. Talk to us about the high end areas here in Southern California. So no doubt the LA market is extremely hot. Mm -hmm. All your top neighborhoods are Beverly Hills, of course. You have Bel Air. Uh, predominantly a lot of new developments, a lot of newer homes, being that the inventory is so short, they're actually creating new inventory by building brand new luxury homes. Right. What about, um, there's there's now other parts that are becoming luxury areas. Can you name a few of those areas? So what's going to happen is when buyers are priced out of a certain neighborhood, they go more to the east. So mm -hmm. for example, if I was buying a house in the Playa del Rey area, since they're being priced out, I'm going to go more east, like Culver City, mm -hmm. a small park called Windsor Hill in Los Angeles, and that becomes a little more affordable and prices will continue to rise in those areas. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's so amazing how marketing for real estate agents has changed as well. Like, for example, now some real estate agents, including Lowell and Vanderbilt, do amazing, beautiful videos. Hey, honey. Mm, I really don't feel that well. I think I'm going to stand and rest. Okay, call me if you need anything. Okay, thanks, babe. Alexa, play music. So we're on a digital age. 90% uh, of buyers search online. So when you advertise online, you're actually creating a story. Uh, you're selling the lifestyle. We have technology, we don't need videos, but also Matterports, where it's a digital walkthrough of a house. So if I'm in a, a different country, I can actually be inside a house in Los Angeles, virtual by my computer. Wow, and does that really produce results? Like, have you seen a direct result, like purchase because of those videos? Absolutely, I get well, contacted. Well, I saw some of your videos, and they're like you say, it's not like, oh, this is the way this room looks. This is the there's a story. You you shoot them with a little story behind them, which features every little single. Amenity, correct, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. You want to hire the best features of the home on top of creating a lifestyle. That's right, and then you even have to hire like models or actresses. So now you're not just a real estate agent, you're a, a movie director, director right? you're a <laughs> casting agent. So talk to us about that process. Like, um, you know, what kind of feeling are you trying to evoke when you do these videos? So you want to have fun w with your project and you want to create value and kind of imagine if I was a buyer, what would I like to see? Right. So you want a lot of eyeballs in your property, in your videos. So we got a influencer, uh, mm -hmm. Crystalina, has a million followers. I thought if I get her in the video, not only is she um, part of the video to me enhance the selling techniques, but also more viewership. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So obviously we've seen prices for homes skyrocket, Bell, yes, right? I yeah, mean, definitely. A no lot one, of people can't buy anymore. Exactly. Right. Do you think it's a bubble or, I mean, what, what kind Great of perspective question. could you give us? So if we look since 1975, you look at the economy of real estate, you'll see a trend between eight to 12 years. That's when cycles hit their peak and crash. Mm -hmm. So at this, if my math is right, we're heading for a correction. Uh, basically, price will stabilize. Right. That's what I'm predicting the next couple of years. And if there's someone looking to purchase a home, give us the top three tips. Great question. Number one, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? What type of home are you looking for? It's basically an investment, more long term, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, uh, get your, your financing straight. Make sure that you get your uh, priorities as far as your financials. Uh, make sure you're qualified and have the proper assets to qualify. And number three, hire a local agent. Somebody actually service your, your marketplace. And like you said, agents are problem solvers. They're not really agents. What do you mean by that? So have you considered that when you're dealing with a high uh, net worth client, they're not looking for a realtor to match their lifestyle. What they want to do is kind of collapse time. It's mm -hmm. a huge commodity for our clients. So our job is to get them the most results in the least amount of time. Right. Awesome. And um, where can anyone who has any questions about real estate find you? Fantastic. We're on social media under LowellVanderbilt.com. Uh, uh, also a website as well. 
Okay, okay. Lowell and Vanderbilt.com. And especially if you want to get that celebrity treatment, I know that you know how to deliver that. You have my number, so you reach me then. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so, Thank much, you so much, Caesar. We'll hope to have you again soon because you are in house real estate expert. Yeah. Appreciate that. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, we will be right back with a lot more here on the Trend Talk. Don't go away. It's time to say goodbye, but I want to say thanks to all of our wonderful guests who came and shared a little bit of their world. And our Trend Talk Trendsetter shout out goes to Joe Leal, an Army veteran from Iraq who has a program called Vet Hunters. Through that program, he helps veterans who have been misplaced by homelessness. Take a look. I know what it's like to be homeless. I lived in shelters. I lived in homeless shelters with my family, so I knew what it was like. Hey, come on down over here, guys. Let's go through this and see what you guys can get. What an amazing hero he is. He truly is, truly. Remember to follow us on social media, on our Instagram, we're on Twitter, on Facebook, and of course, on our website, because we're always talking, because if, if it's, it's trending, trending, we're talking. talking.